Hi guys, what's up? So um, today I want to show you in a couple of videos how I go about making a new knot. And um, I have recently acquired this lovely uh, Squire modified Telecaster Deluxe. And um, it's a great guitar. Um, I really love the sound of the two um, wide range humbuckers here. Um, something I'm not very keen of is the bridge saddles down here um, because they don't really have you know um, that type of groove in them uh, so some of the strings just basically slide around um, and well I guess it it can be fine um, but I would very much prefer to have you know the uh, regular type of um, um, you know the regular fender types of saddles down here um, that's what I meant to say but all those things aside uh, the neck is great and uh, the fretboard is um, just as great um, I went over the frets um, a little while ago um, I think I uploaded some videos on that too so if you want to check that out you can just scroll through my videos and you'll probably see it there um, but as I said this time I want to focus a little here on the knot um, and how I go about making that so let me just get you positioned here and just zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on um, well, we have a little bit of chipping out there, and I guess that's from uh, putting in the knot here, because when you are working with uh, lacquered fretboards, you have to be um, extra cautious, because as you see here, some of it might chip out. So that's just the risk you run by uh, performing this type of surgery, if you would call it that. But I'm going to replace this knot and um, as of right now the only thing that's really wrong with this knot is that it's probably uh, cut too low so some of the strings are bossing on the frets and um, it's just annoying and it just gets in the way of doing a basic setup because we have some of the, the thicker strings here uh, being a little too close or they don't vibrate enough because they are closer to the frets and given that their diameter is a little bit greater than some of the others here so um, I'm just going to you know pop this nut out and uh, make a new one and probably just you know get it somewhere in the ballpark so we have a little bit of room up here to kind of adjust our way around it and um, the way I'm going to make this knot here, um, as I also I'm going to show you in some of the next videos, but the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to use some kind of um, knot shaping jig that I bought a couple of months back. And um, I bought it from a company uh, based in the UK called GMC Luthia Tools. And um, that jig is just a lifesaver, uh, basically, because it will take out all the measuring and headaches and whatnot. Uh, because this jig is really simple to set up, and you can basically gauge the nut slot uh, depth and the radius by using this jig. So basically, all you have to do is get the jig set up correctly and um, basically just file away until you reach the um, the radius that you have fitted on there so I'm just I'm going to take you through all of this so you can see what I mean but this is the way that I'm going to do it here and it's just it's really easy and it just takes out all of those measurements and yeah different stuff you have to to go about when you doing it the other way around so but hey you can do it that way too I just I found this jig um, and I just 
I had to have it right away because it would just make my life so much easier when I have to make new nuts for guitars and it um, it can make you know you can set up nuts for an Epiphone, a Gibson, Fender whatever type of nut you have as long as you just gauge the, the nut slot so that's a great thing um, so let me just quickly um, zoom out for you guys here and uh, let me get the uh, the jig so I can show you what it is basically and um, basically what it is is that it's this jig right here and it has you know a curved side here and on the other side here you might see we have some numbers we have 12 we have 14 and 16 and we have a curved radius up here and this is because I recently made a nut for an Epiphone guitar and I had to use the 12 inch radius and the way this is going to work is that I have gauged the, the nut slot here so basically this part here will um, will uh, lay or be set on the fretboard uh, the top of the fretboard up here uh, and when the nut is, uh, has been taken out you would basically use the flat side down here to uh, to gauge the uh, the radius um, and that way it will basically you know if you can see this down here it has basically created a step in the jig here where we have the difference in height here and that's the the height of the nut slot on that given guitar um, and from there you might be able to see that if I just pull this in a little closer we have um, kind of a backward angle here and this is the angle that you would file for the back side here on, on the jig so you have your radius maintained by the radius call here and you have the angle that you need to file and reach um, in order to you know get that type of angle on your nut so really easy you just have to gauge the nut slot insert the nut blank and basically file away until you reach the the back side here and you've got that angle on your nut and it's you know it's shaped to the right dimensions because you've gauged the nut slot down here so this um, particular nut jig that I'm going to use here is really handy and it's really easy uh, later on when we have to do the string spacing we have this thing over here which we can attach to the uh, to the jig and slide it across kind of like a string spacing rule and it will give us the measurements uh, from when we have located our two outer E strings um, so in this jig we can file the jig we can set up its dimensions and we can you know find the proper string spacing at last and from there it's basically just you know take out the nut blank from the jig uh, cut it to a roughly size and then just go back and forth fitting it into the nut slot filing it and make sure we get it nice and flush and uh, from there we're just going to polish it up um, so most of the work is actually done in the jig which is nice because you can clamp this into a bench device or whatever you have on your work table or workspace so that's great. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm I'm going to be using for this, and um, there'll be a couple of videos um, to show you this in the different steps. So I reckon it's going to be all right. Um, the next step I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a look at the knot here, tap it out, and see how that goes. And I'm going to film that for you so you can see what I'm actually doing. Um, yeah, and just basic stuff to probably get this nut out as, you know, as good as possible without ruining anything on the fretboard here. Um, and as I showed you, we might also go in and um, we might go in and adjust that that little chip right there, fill it in or something like that. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut the video here, guys, and um, I will see you in the next video where I'll tap out the knot and show you what I would do when I have to do that. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so what I'll start off by doing here, um, 
is I'm going to remove the old strings. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I'm not going to throw them out right away. I'm not, I'm not going to cut them off because uh, at least the high E and the low E, those two strings, I will need for later purposes when I have to locate the, the two outer E strings here. Um, so at least I'm going to save those two. So I'm just going to to um, take them off and um, just basically leave them intact um, in case I need any of them for fitting and it might also be nice to have those strings for when I have to set up the guitar afterwards so I don't have to waste a proper new set of strings um, yeah that way it would just be a little easier and I can take a a new set of strings afterwards when I know that the nut uh, fits as it should. And with these old tuners here, it's just to you know loosen up the strings and just pull it right up. That's a, a good thing about these vintage tuners here. Um, yeah, so just take off the strings, and um, I hope that this little video series here showing you how to make a nut, I hope it will help some of you people out there and um, at least if you're already on your computer um, take a look at the GMC Luthier uh, webpage and just basically take a look there to see if there are any stuff that um, that you can live without. <laughs> I know there's a, a couple of things on that page that uh, I will buy in the future. Um, Basically, it's, it's great stuff, guys. Go check it out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description, so you can just click right through it. Um, let me just zoom in here, guys, so you can see what's going on. Right. Okay, so now we have to take out the knot. And um, basically, um, the way I like to do that is either, either by taking a piece of... Uh, basically some hard material, it could be a block of wood or anything like that. Um, just so it can cover the edge here and I can kind of lightly tap it with a, a small hammer. And when we get to that, it's, it's, not, it's not all about, you know, um, let me take you out here. It's not all about uh, the force about it. I have this chisel here, which is covered in some kind of wood here so it protects the um, the edge from being sharp um, I would just basically lay it up here and then with a the hammer down here I would tap it and see if that you know breaks up anything and if it doesn't if the knot here is being too stubborn I would take the chisel out so I can use the very point of the chisel um, and it's very small and it should actually fit fit the slot right here so I might be able to just you know pop it in here and give it a light tap with the hammer and see if that lifts it up um, but before we go ahead and do all of those things it's always nice to take a razor blade here uh, a somewhat sharp one and um, we have to score around the edges because um, in case some of the lacquer here or some glue where the nut is, is seated, if some of that squeezed out, it might take some of the finish off with it if we just go ahead and, and knock it out. So it's always a good idea to score around the edges just to make sure that we're not going to take big chunks of the finish out. So basically just lay it up here and you're not looking to score into the wood or anything, you're just scoring into to the knot and just making sure that you you free it from any sticking um, finish or glue. So we're just going to run it up ahead here and just be careful not to slip over the edges or anything like that. And I might go down to the sides here and just make sure that I can get maybe a little under and just, you know, you will feel it when you do it because you will feel that the the uh, the blade is 
scoring the lacquer. And I can actually feel it right now. Um, so I don't believe this nut is going to be particularly hard to get out. And I can kind of get this blade inserted a little way into the nut. So now we basically just, you know, we scored around the edges and made sure that everything is supposed to be. And I might just try the, the sharp uh, chisel here. And see how that goes. So, I would just take uh, a hammer or something like that if I can find that. Uh, it's right here. Just take a little hammer and I might just try and insert the chisel down here to see if I can get it under without actually damaging anything. And I might just give it a little tap to see what happens. Okay. So that did a little bit. Might try and insert it from the other way here. And maybe just try and see if I can get it up. Okay. I might try it from the other side again here. Basically just see if I can tap it a little bit. It's not about tapping that hard, it's just getting the knot loose. got in a little bit. I might just try and take the the uh, holster here from the, the uh, chisel and just lightly tap it to see if that gives anything. And I'm sorry if the camera is shaking a bit when I do that, but I'm just trying to give it a light tap. Maybe a little bit from the other side. And it's just light, light tabbing generally. So hmm. it's seated quite nicely in there. So we might just try and give it a little go with the chisel again here. See how that goes. Okay, I can just, I can see it start to come loose here, so I might be able to just take it out lightly here, if I just... Yeah, alright. Let's just move this a little bit, and move the camera as well. Just try and get you guys to see here. Um. I'm just going to insert it here on the other the other side again. Just give it a little tap, see how that goes. Alright. I basically feel that it's coming loose, so I would just work on it. Um trying to get a little little looser here and um, I just cut the video guys and I'll get back when I have okay, guys. Out. So as I said uh, in the last little segment uh, I was just going to try and get the the nut out and um, just before I even went ahead and um, and tried anything further uh, than what you just saw in the last segment I just went ahead and I took some masking tape and I just um, put it across the uh, the edges here or almost up to the edges um, just to make sure that if the nut came out um, still sticking to some of the lacquer or some of the um, the glue inside of the slot uh, I just want to make sure that I wouldn't tear out any major flakes um, from the finish here so I highly recommend that you do this um, and perhaps even before you get started, just make it a good habit and uh, and tape off uh, to protect the areas here. 
and um, yeah, as I said, I just I used this um, little chisel here um, and kind of just inserted it a little bit along the side here, gave it a little tap with the hammer, and inserted it from the other way around and gave it a little tap, and that kind of. Um, lifted the nut up a little bit um, and I just inserted a little uh, small object here to just get it in and kind of you know wiggle it out a little bit and I got it out um, but it broke when I took it out but it doesn't really matter since we're making a new one um, and I just plan on you know making the new one um, as I said from scratch using the the jig that I showed you and um, we're not really going to pay that much attention to whatever string spacing was on it here um, on the previous knot. We're just going to, you know, get started on the new knot as soon as possible and um, get it roughly in shape of what we need. Uh, make sure that the fit is good up here, um, which is also why I didn't cover the edges up all the way. So I had a little room to, you know, insert the knot blank when I when I need to do that. Um, so um, when we get the knot roughly in shape, we're just going to install the high and low E string and we're just going to position them um, somewhat in where we think they're supposed to sit so they don't fall off the, the edges of the frets here or fall right off the, the fretboard. And we're just going to take it from there. So uh, I just, just wanted to give you that little update and um, in the next video we should be ready to put this guitar um, aside and just get ready to measure the, the depth of the, the slot here um, and we'll do that before we put the guitar aside and um, when we have that set up and we've gauged the nut slot depth we're going to insert the, the blank and we're going to take a closer look at that blank uh, just to make sure um, if we have to square up some of the edges or anything like that. And of course we have to to um, sand some of it down in thickness because uh, the blank that I have is almost double the size of the slot. So I have to take down quite a bit, but we'll have to see about that. Um, and probably just mark it down so we have some some lines that we can, we can sand after. Um, but we'll get to all that. So, just want to show you this guys and um, I'll be back with some, some more updates and videos and uh, just see how this goes. So stay tuned guys.